Welcome, friends, to another edition of Tiffin Box TV. I am your host, Seishu, and I'm so thrilled to have Marie Moss with me today. Marie is based in Chicago, and she's a photographer, but she's also the founder of a website that I've absolutely fallen in love with called Fearless and Framed. We're going to learn about Fearless and Framed in just a second, but I wanted to invite Marie to talk a little bit about her background as a photographer, how she got started, and what she's doing in Michigan. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I started when I had a baby, so I don't have this, you know, 10 years of photography experience under my belt. My daughter was born in 2011, and I had a Canon Rebel T2i at the time, and I, I had no interest in photography itself, but I wanted to take a photo of her for a day for a year, and so I set out to do that, and it became a habit that lasted three years and three months. So every single day I picked up the camera and photographed her. We had a son eventually. And that, about a year into shooting, well, what happened is in the beginning, I was like, why do my photos suck? Like, I thought this camera was amazing. And I'm like, well, how, do, how come my photos don't look like what I'm seeing on Pinterest? So I started reading articles when she'd be napping and that was really how I learned was just reading through from the internet and kind of just observing other photos. And a year later I started my photography business and was absolutely terrified every time that I went to a session and I'd be at a park and I'd be sitting in the parking lot thinking, all right, how am I going to pose these people? There's five people. And I'd be like, on my phone, looking at Pinterest, like, all right, oh, that's a great idea. Like this part, like scared me. I, it was like paralyzing in a way. And then I like, as I progressed in business in my own shooting, I was like, my photos of my, my own personal photos are so different than the ones that I'm shooting. And I'm like, why is this? So I started to slowly think, okay, I have all these photos that when I look at them, there's a memory in there, like a real live memory that I am taken right back to that day or that moment. I want to do that for my clients. And, but I didn't really know how. And so the, I remember one of my first sessions where I wanted to approach it with this more documentary approach, but, but like more than just documentary, more than just showing up at someone's house and shooting whatever they were doing. I really wanted to make sure that we were building a session that was meaningful. And anyway, this one of the first sessions that I did, it was it wasn't a flop, but it was like I gr I've grown a long way because they showed up dressed like they were going out at this park and one of the things that they like to do is shoot with bows and arrows, like do target practice, and so they brought this um fake deer to this park and then we fished, but they were dressed for a photo session. And we were at this location that was totally abnormal for them. So I started to just really hone in on the communication part of it all. And I really started to understand that um, it's, a, it's a lot of work on the front end to really get people to relax and understand um, that the things that are meaningful to them are actually valuable because a lot of people look at their life just like sometimes if you go to the job on a Monday, what did you do this weekend? And it, oh, nothing. And it's the oh nothings that are really the most important things. And so, um, so yeah, I kind of just felt that a little bit deeper than I think maybe most people do and ran with it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, how did you come up on the idea that you know, those things are meaningful? Or is it just something that you felt deep inside of you and you just sort of saw it in your client's eyes and their, in their, in their body language? that, okay, well, these connections that they're making in front of you and you're capturing are the ones that they're resonating with as well after the session. Uh, how did you how did you make that just, that sort of jump from, okay, well, here's a group of people who are dressed up, uh, in, obviously, for a photo shoot, I guess, whatever mm -hmm. that means, uh, mm -hmm. and, and they show up with bows and arrows. I mean, that's so odd in itself, <laughs> you know, right? And, and, and you're, you're trying to make a photograph that means something, but then you go deeper and you find that it's it's the interactions that that finally make the image for you and for, perhaps mm -hmm. for them as well right right so what happened was i just have experienced lots of changes in my life and i don't i think that it's 
through, um, like I've lost all of my grandparents, but as a child, I spent a lot of time with them. I was very fortunate to be a part of my great grandmother's life. I had a best friend in high school that passed away, like just all these things that, and so, so for example, growing up, I went to these Thanksgivings and Christmases with 30 people and that doesn't happen anymore at all. Um, it's my little family and my parents and my sister, maybe. And it's not this house full of cousins like it used to be. And I think that I had such an amazing childhood that I look at so many different relations, just relationship changes. Now as a mom, I think about the times before babies when Dave, my husband and I would drink wine and make these amazing dinners, veg out on the couch and do nothing. And I'm like, and we would just dream about the future. And I'm like, man, I miss that. And it's like those sorts of things. There's like, I have to get these into photos for people because they will miss it. Indeed. So, does it actually- indeed. indeed. Uh, you know, as, as a photographer uh, who photographs families as well, this is, this is exactly what goes through my mind as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is you, you not only have your own business, but you also have this website called fearless and framed, uh, you know, mm-hmm. Why, why fearless and framed? What does that mean to you? What that means to me, the word fearless was really about how I felt boxed in. Like I had to be, I don't like the word replicate, but I really inspired my client sessions in the beginning based off of what I saw on Pinterest. I thought I had to make these signs that said, this is our happily ever after. And I had to, um, really coach people to laugh and interact at a session. And it felt fake to me for one thing. And I was like, I need to be a little more fearless and demand like that my clients look at me as the expert and the professional and that they need to follow my artistic vision because they're loving the photos of my children and my, my personal photos, but that's not what they're getting by me. Like thinking I need to give them what they think a photo session should be. So that was the fearless. And then framed, I was like, I got to have a photography word in there. And I'm thinking fearless and framed. It's like, that's, you're framing your artistic vision. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, and you've, you've, you've published uh, your blog and your website for how many years now? What is it, what is it that you've been? You've it been... was n- November of 2014 when I actually launched it. Okay. So it's been about a year and a half, I'd say, mm-hmm. right? Right. Uh, what kinds of... What kinds of feedback have you received uh, from other photographers who have st- stumbled on across your blog or who you have actually marketed to? What, what is it that you that they they say about framed and uh, fearless and framed? Sorry, that's OK. Uh, the main thing that jumps out at me is they're like this. This is what I want to do more of in my business. How do I do it? And yeah. and what what is it that you tell them? So, well, it starts with. I mean, there's so many aspects. I mean, there's the shooting aspect of it because if people, especially if they were a photographer that really started trying to master poses, it's really weird to start trying to shoot in this more freeing sense because they're used to being so verbal with directing and now they have to almost take a back seat. But then there's also the situations where you show up to this session where your clients, if you haven't done a really good job I I don't like the word planning, but really, I guess, setting expectations in the beginning. Then you show up and people look overly dressed. So like they will, for for example, one session I did was an engagement session and we were going boating and the girl wore a cocktail dress. Who wears a cocktail dress when you're going boating? And so if you don't set some expectations, they will really stare at you like, what are we supposed to be doing? And so I, I talked to them a lot about the planning side. I feel like that's an area that I've mastered really well. And then even with shooting, like I know how to overcome when people start to feel a little bit awkward around the camera. And for example, I like to be like, all right, I got to go change my lens and I'll walk out of the room. And then that will let them settle back into each other. And then I come back in and continue shooting. So I think that with Fearless and Framed, it's and it's beyond the shooting and beyond the planning. It's also a lot. We try to talk a lot about confidence in really your artistic vision. Now there are so many different mentors out there and people that teach photography. And I find a lot that people will 
take what somebody says to a T. And so I really try to be like, listen, use your own voice, like use all of this information, but form your own opinion. <laughs> That's um, so I talk a lot about um, just really finding your own way, I think also. Which is phenomenal. I think I, I love how liberating that is, to be honest with you, because, uh, you know, there's one thing that uh, I, and I've been at this uh, since 1996 uh, and, you know, uh, and I feel like there are lots of must do's and should do's and and those rules all have sort of gone away. And uh, the, the new Ooh. photographer, the new emerging photographer has to find her or his own way. And uh, obviously looking back at, uh, you know, history and looking back at those who who've, who've sort of led the way makes a lot of di makes a big difference um mm -hmm. but uh, you know as you said you know you've got to take what they've taught you and then you make it your own right i mean you, mm -hmm. that's where you find exactly creative freedom i mean there's no creative mm -hmm. freedom by copying somebody but 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 yeah. actually really focusing on on your own vision of what what a family should look like or a couple mm -hmm. should look like uh yeah. that's great advice i'll tell you what i'm going to ask you this uh what other pieces of advice would you give somebody who's starting out and wants to document reality, as you say, on your website? I mean, and what, the other question to me for you is why this, why is documenting reality so attractive to you? Okay. So my advice would be to practice like at least 10 minutes a day. And you don't even have to necessarily pick up your camera to practice. It's a lot of just mental observation. So what that means is I feel like through my 365 project that I did for so long, I started to just, I recognized mannerisms. I recognized light. I recognized routines, moments, firsts, lasts, all of it. So I feel like even set a phone reminder in, yeah, set a reminder in your phone to just take 10 minutes a day to just observe. People watch. Um, that has been my biggest and I still do it today. Like just, I'll find myself in a situation where I'm just like, Oh, I'm totally being a photographer right now without my camera. Um, and if you get in that habit, your vision will expand rapidly. Absolutely. That's I believe great. that. So, and as far as documenting reality and why is it important? It's funny because I ask that question a lot to my audience because I know why it's important to me, but I think that everybody's perception is a little bit different. For me, it's it's honestly been like all of those changes I was talking about and I'm like, I want to be able to, if I can't relive that moment, I feel like being able to look at a photograph and see my grandpa in his garden would just, it'd be so much more than this fuzzy memory of him. And I feel like that's where a lot of um, photo sessions miss the mark. They look, they go for you know, this beautiful polished look. And I'm like, I like my mom, she wears this denim Mickey Mouse jacket and carries a diet Mountain Dew bottle in her hand all the time. Like I would rather have a photo that really reflects her than something that is just beautiful and made to look beautiful, if that makes sense. Sure. And I feel it. And I think that for every person, like when we are older and we're looking back on our lives, for one thing, it helps us like really understand our identity when we see family interaction type of photos because they feel like we will see like, oh, I remember when my dad used to do that. Wow, he really, I'm, if you're thinking about like this teenager that's in her bedroom because she hates her dad, that he won't let her go out on a date. And then if she's able to look at these photos from childhood, she'd be like, wow, my family actually really does care about me. So maybe they do have the best interest in my heart. Um, I think about, you know, the grandparents, we were talking about this, my audience and I were talking about grandparent photo sessions, like photo sessions with grandkids and grandparents, something I would have loved to have had because now my grandparents are gone. Um, and I have, I have like no photos of me with my grandparents, which is kind of sad. Yeah. So yeah, I, I completely get it. Um, I, I, and this is, this is all pure gold as I, I think I mentioned <laughs> to you before I started recording. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, you are a photographer, but obviously you are a teacher. I mean, mm -hmm. it's so clear um, that you are a teacher. Um, what inspires you most about being a teacher? I think that, well, I mean, there's the obvious watching people grow, mm -hmm. but what really 
what I love is that when I'm watching other photographers take on this approach to photography, it's like, holy cow, I could be a photographer and just do this for myself. But when I teach other people to do it, it's not that I'm even just impacting the photographers, but it's all the people that actually have photos that represent their family heritage. And to me, that is just, that just warms my heart. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Really, truly. Um, and you have, uh, you have courses on your website. You have eBooks galore. I mean, you can, you can sign, every page you turn, there's a sign up for something new that you're offering really for free. Um, but you also have something called the mastery moment seekers course, which you mm -hmm. said is coming in, in the fall. Tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. mastery moment seekers. What does that mean? Exactly. Well, I learned through starting Fearless and Frames, I had no intentions of teaching the business or marketing anything. My, my heart is really in with shooting, but I have a Facebook group. It's called the Goodbye Posing Guide group. We've got about 3,000 members in there. It's open to whoever. Um, and then I learned through that Facebook group is everyone's like, how do I convince clients to want or value? Value seems like it's the word of the day, um, this type of session. And so I was like realizing that so many photographers, and I was guilty of this, but the thing is, is I have several years of experience in direct sales. So this was, and this was really before the like internet marketing or before I knew anything about internet marketing. And I really had to master how to communicate with people to get people to host a party and then book a party from a party and all of that. And I've applied a lot of that knowledge into my own businesses between photography and fearless and framed. So I wanted to come up with this course that encompassed communication and where I feel like photographers have this missed mark is actually educating clients. Like they think that their clients, my ideal client is going to value photography. Well, you have to do a little bit of education up front to get them to understand why they should value photography because they're not photographers most of the time, unless you're photographing other creatives. But um, so I, this course it runs, it's eight weeks of content, but the mastery level, they get weekly phone calls with me for 12 weeks where we, it's kind of like a book club. We discuss the content and they're doing exercises. They are turning in homework, but the homework isn't very, it's not every week. And the growth that they have got out of that isn't necessarily like, they don't necessarily come out of this with, oh, I've got 20 bookings on my calendar. But the biggest thing that I have heard is that their confidence is growing. They're finally understanding how to communicate with people on their inquiry calls. And even before that, how to get. So when I first started with documenting, it was this, I was still getting all of these well, before this. It was inquiries that were, I love your photos. What are your rates? What are your um, packages? Now people, the inquiries are different. They've shifted. They are like, I saw this campfire photo session. We do this all the time in our family. So people are like, the people that are coming to me are now, like I've done my job at pre, like, I don't know the word, but they're warmed up. They know they're more of a warm lead rather than just somebody looking for a photographer. And so I teach them how to really make that happen in lieu of sh just showing sessions on your website all the time. I believe in really having some flagship pieces of content that teach people what you really do and how it makes an impact on their lives because that's how you're going to sell them. If you just open the conversation to trying to sell them, then then you are going to feel like you're going to have to twist their arm because they don't get it. So cool. Very cool. Um, my last question to you is, can you save me a spot? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. It'll start Great. in September. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Uh, Marie, thank you so much uh, for coming on this sh short interview show um, and talking to us about Fearless and Framed and your work and your teaching. Uh, you're a true inspiration. Uh, and I appreciate all that you're doing for the industry. I know you've, you know, for, for a lot of photographers, uh, you know, the length of time that you've been a photographer seems to be such a big deal. You know, like you've all been a photographer since 1996. I never say that to anybody, by the way, because uh, <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. You know, uh, it, it is how much you put into it now and moving forward that makes the most difference in my mind. Uh, and clearly, you know, the fact that you started in 2011, uh, it, who cares? 
you know, the fact is you're rocking it and it's, I, I, and I love what you're doing. Uh, so thanks for doing what you do. Thank you very much for joining us today. I look forward to being in touch and, you know, being part of that course in, in the fall. Yes. I can't wait to have you. Take care. Thank Bye. you for having me. Bye. Bye. Bye.